Hello and welcome. Today we're doing a question from Leak Code called Power of Two. Now this is marked easy, but this is actually a really good question. So what is it asking? Given an integer n, return true if it is a power of two. Otherwise, return false. An integer n is a power of two if there exists an integer x such that n equals two to the x for any integer x. Example one, we have n being one. This is true. Two to the zero will get us one. Example two, n is 16. Again, this is true. Two to the four gets a 16. And example three, n equals three. This is false. No integer power of two will actually get us to three. We have some constraints and a follow-up. Can you solve it without loops or recursion? Well, first, how do we actually solve it through the use of loops or recursion? So we want to figure out if our input n is a power of two. Now, what does it mean to be a power of two? It means we can multiply two an x number of times, two times two times two, until we get our original input n. Now, in our constraints, we were given a pretty big range. n could be anything from negative two to the 31 to two to the 31 minus one. But if we want to figure out if something is a power of two, that means we're going to be multiplying two some number of times to get that number, right? Anything that is negative will never actually work. How can we multiply a positive number some number of times and end up with a negative number? That's never going to work, right? So our base case could be checking whether n is less than equal to zero. If that's true, we're going to return false right away. So if n is less than equal to zero, we return false. No matter how many times we try to multiply two, we're never going to get any number less than equal to zero. Okay, so now we know we're dealing with an n that is at least one. How do we figure out if it is a power of two? For something to be a power of two, it needs to be two times two times two times two all the way through. If that's not the case, we would return false. So all we need to do is see if two can go evenly into our number. So while n mod two, the remainder we get when we divide by two, while this equals zero, we're just gonna divide n by two. So n is going to equal n integer divided by two. And we're going to keep doing this until we converge to one, because if we keep dividing by two, at some point we should converge to one, right? Say n equals 16 while n mod two equals zero. This is going to be true in this case. Two does go evenly into 16. What we're going to do is set n to be n divided by two. So n is now going to equal eight. We go back in this while loop n mod two will still be zero. Two does go into eight evenly. We're going to set n to be n divided by two. So n is now four. We go back in this while loop, this still is true. We set n to be n divided by two, n is now two. This while loop is still gonna hold true. Again, we divide and now n is one. We can't go back in this while loop anymore because two doesn't go evenly into one. There is a remainder, right? So all we need to do in the end is see if n equals one. If we were able to get all the way down to one, we kept dividing by two to get one. If that's not true, then we would output false. So all we need to do is return whether or not n equals one. And we can see in this example, it did work with 16 because 16 is just two times two times two times two. Now say we had another example, say we had 10, we would check n mod two equals zero. This is gonna be true. We can put two into 10 evenly. So now we wanna set n to be n divided by two, which means n is now going to be five. We go back in this while loop. This is no longer going to be true. Two doesn't evenly go into five. There is going to be a non-zero remainder, right? So we exit this while loop and we return whether or not we were able to converge to one. This is not the case here. So we're going to output false correctly, right? N is not a power of two. 10 is not a power of two. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. Now, how do we solve this without loops? In order to do this, we actually need to switch over into binary. How do we write one in binary? One in binary is just going to be zero, one. How do we write two in binary? One, zero. How do we write four in binary? This is another power of two. That's gonna be one, zero, zero. Eight in binary is going to be one, zero, zero, zero. 16, also a power of two is just one, zero, zero, zero. Remember, this is binary. So every time we have a number that is a power of two, we need to take up another digit. We're taking that one set bit and just moving it over. Now, if you notice, what do all of these numbers have in common? They just have that one set bit, right? If it's not a power of two, it's going to have more than one set bit. Say we had the number five, five in binary, right? We just need to add one to what we have in four. So five is going to be one, zero, one. It has two set bits. 
what is six in binary? Six in binary is just going to be two plus four, so it's one, one, zero. What is seven? Seven is going to be one, one, one. And what is eight? Well, to get to eight, we just have to add one to what we have here. So adding one to seven, we get one plus one, which is two. In binary, that's going to be one, zero. So we write the zero here and we carry the one. One plus one, again, is gonna be one, zero. We carry the one, write the zero here. One plus one is one, zero. There's nothing else after, so we just write one, zero as is. And we get eight. So anytime we have a power of two, because we're dealing with binary numbers, we're only ever gonna have that one set bit. We're taking up a new bit to represent that we're taking up another multiple of two, right? So now we can establish that any power of two will only have one set bit in its binary representation. How does this help us? Well, what if we take that number and subtract one from it? So say we have 16 here. If I want to subtract one, what would my number be? Well, if I subtracted one from 16, I would get zero, one, 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 one. And this makes sense, right? This is 15. If I add one back to this, we're gonna have a zero, carry the one, another zero, carry the one, another zero, carry the one, and then we'll get back our 16 number. One followed by four zeros. Basically, once we subtract a one, that first set bit becomes a zero and everything else that was a zero becomes a one. We're just reversing all the bits. Now with these reversed bits, if we were to and this number with 16, what would we get? If we're anding bits that don't match, it's just going to be zero all the way through. And this is what we're going to use to figure out whether or not we are a power of two. All we need to do is subtract one from our number. And what does subtracting one do? It takes that first set bit and everything else afterwards and just reverses those bits. We saw that happen here, right? That first set bit becomes a zero and everything else after just flips. If we also look at example eight over here, right? It's one, zero, zero, zero. How do we write seven? That's going to be zero, one, one, one. All of these bits are flipped from that first one we see onward. And so if we were to end that with our original number, we should zero out completely. The only time that wouldn't be true is if we have more than one set bit. Say n is five, so our number in binary is going to be one, zero, one. There's more than just one set bit in this number. Five minus one is four, so that's going to be one, zero, zero. And we can see what happens when we subtract one, right? We reverse everything from that first set bit onwards. Now there's nothing else after this one, so there's nothing to really reverse after that, but we can see that first set bit reversed. So if we were to go ahead and and five and four, we would get one, zero, zero. We have not zeroed out completely, and that's because we have more than one set bit in our number. We're not a power of two. And that's all we need to do to check. So what we're going to do is write this in one line. We just want to return whether or not n is greater than zero, first of all. And if that is the case, it is greater than zero. We also want to see what happens once we and n with n minus one, whether or not this equals zero. So n anded with n minus one should equal zero. If this is true and n is greater than zero, then we know we are a power of two. So let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. And we did this without using any loops or any recursion. All we had to do is make two simple checks to see whether or not we are a power of two. So we just solved power of two from leak code. We did this both through an iterative approach as well as the binary approach. If you have questions with anything, let me know down below in the comments. I'll answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, share, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.